Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today is Tip Tuesday and today I'm showing you how to make your own traveler's notebook inserts. So I have a few videos on my channel but they're kind of buried with other tutorials and I get lots of questions about this all the time so I thought I would do a specific video showing how to make your own inserts. So if you're not familiar, traveler's notebook inserts, um, here are a couple and they are meant to fill in a traveler's notebook system like this one from Felicity Jane. I am using mine to work through the 30 days of thankful prompt um, in these inserts, but you could use these for your uh, verse writing, your daily scripture writing, uh, sermon notes. There's lots of printables on Etsy where you can print out uh, calendar inserts and trackers and all kinds of things if you want to make your own um, inserts. You can purchase inserts. I have a couple here. Um, this one here is from Felicity Jane. This one is from Webster's Pages. Um, the Webster's Pages one is... Uh, sewn for the binding. The Felicity Jane is stapled for the binding. So there's a couple different ways to bind them. And then there are lots of different ways you can buy them as far as like grid, dot grid, lined, blank. Um, this one seems to have more pages than the Felicity Jane, so you can get them super thick. You can get them a little bit thinner. There's lots of different ways, but I like to make my own. That way I can kind of customize how many pages I want in there and all that goodness. So I'll talk about the measurements that I cut the paper to, the papers that I use, and I'm gonna show you three different ways to bind it. I'm gonna show you how to staple it using a long arm stapler, how to sew it with your sewing machine, and then also how to hand stitch a binding um, if that's the way that you want to do it. So let's dive in. I'm going to show you the first of all the measurements and how to cut everything and then we'll go into the different bindings for these notebooks. Okay so first up you're going to want some patterned papers for your covers. So I have a few here from the Faith Line from Simple Stories. These are 12 by 12 patterned papers. You can get them either you know double sided, single sided, whatever you want. It's kind of the nice thing about making your own. So I have a few here. And then as far as the paper to fill it, you can just use regular copy paper. That is fine. Um, or I've even done some with cardstock. However that is super thick. But I reached out to Andrea. She's retro hit mama and asked her what she used in hers and she suggested this paper here by navigator this is very similar to the paper that's inside the felicity jane inserts and i love it it's super thick it's super smooth it's just really high quality paper i have done a little bit of watercoloring just keep in mind it is like printer paper so it isn't going to take wet mediums super super well but it's nice that it's thicker and it holds up for doing like photo documenting and things like that so i will have this link down below and this is what i will be filling my inserts with. Now I like to fill my inserts with three to five sheets of this folded in half. If I get more than that, it gets super thick. If I'm just using it to write in, then it can be a little bit thicker. But if you're going to be adding photos and die cuts and, and that kind of thing to it, then you want to stick to a smaller insert and then just use multiple inserts. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put you on fast forward. We'll start cutting everything down and assembling everything. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a 12 by 12 piece of patterned paper, and we are gonna cut this to eight and a half inches wide. And I'm just using my Fiskars trimmer. And then we're gonna turn this and cut it to eight and a quarter inches tall. So then I'll go ahead and I like to use my trimmer to score down the center at four and a quarter, So, the, or you could just fold it in half but so when this is folded, it's going to be eight and a quarter inches tall. And when folded, it is four and a quarter inches wide, if that makes sense. So you can see if I turn some copy paper, there is a little bit of an overhang at the top. So I need to trim this first. So I'm gonna trim a quarter inch off the long side. So that's gonna take this eight and a half inch wide piece of paper to eight and a quarter inches, which remember is how tall our booklet is. And I'm going to turn this and then fold them in half. I like to fold each page individually. That way I get nice, crisp, clean folds. I do use my bone folder to um, go over those folds just so that everything is nice and crisp and so the book lays closed as flat as possible. So now I can go ahead and slide all of those into the booklet. And so this booklet is again eight and a quarter inches tall by four and a quarter inches wide. And that's uh, kind of what I've figured out works for most standard uh, traveler's notebooks. So to trim this 
Well, we're, we're gonna trim it in a second. First, we're going to clamp everything so nothing moves. And I like to work on my binding before I trim off the excess. So what I have here is a long arm stapler and I've actually marked on the stapler where the staple comes out. That way I can make sure I get it lined up perfectly on that crease of my booklet. And you can add two or three staples right on that crease. And that is the simplest, fastest way to bind these. You do have to, you know, invest in a long arm stapler, but if you're gonna make a lot of these, then it's worth it. So now I can go ahead and trim off the excess um, inside papers that are sticking out. I like to just use my trimmer and use several passes. You could also use a metal ruler and a craft knife and um, cut it that way if you're, you know, making really, really thick inserts, that works as well. So that's it for that one. Next up, we are going to sew a binding. So I've got everything set up exactly the same. I went ahead and cut it the same, insert the pages and secured it. And instead of stapling, we're gonna go ahead and just run this through my sewing machine. So I'm just using a standard stitch, regular thread, nothing fancy. I know you're supposed to not sew fabric and paper on the same machine, but I'm a rebel, I do it. <laughs> so I like to sew a couple stitches into the book and then I reverse stitch a couple stitches. That way it secures where I start and stop my stitch. And then I am just stitching along where that fold line is. I'm really, 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 really simple. And then when I get to the end, I'll go ahead and stop and reverse stitch a couple of stitches again to secure it. And then I go ahead and just stitch off the edge of the paper and then that's it, it's pretty much secured. I don't have to worry about it um, coming apart since I reverse stitched. So you can see that there, nice and even. You could always do you know, whatever stitches you like best. I just go with simple and easy. Now, let's pretend that this is the pink paper. <laughs> I had some issues with my, my footage, so I had to refilm it, but this is the same booklet with a stitch binding and I'm just doing the same thing. I'm now going in and chopping off the excess that's hanging out. And I found this works better to do after your binding is secure. That way nothing is shifting and moving around while you're cutting into it. So that is another easy way to bind these, especially if you're not doing super, super thick um, booklets. Next up is to hand stitch. And so what I have here is everything is set up the same, cut the same, folded the same, secured the same. And then I am using a Tim Holtz craft pick and you can use an old mouse pad. I'm just using an Amy, Amy Tangerine stitching pad. I'm gonna poke a hole right in the center, one at the top, one in between the top and the center and then the bottom and then one in between the center and the bottom. So here you can see I've got five. You could measure those out so they're perfect. I don't worry about it. I let them be random. And then I have some embroidery floss here and you're gonna start from the back of your book through the center hole. And I'm gonna pull this through and leave myself a little bit of a tail because we are going to knot this once we're done. So we'll come up from the center, we'll go down through the second hole there to the right, pulling it through, making sure it's nice and tight, but not so tight that you're tearing your paper, or pulling it and making it pucker or anything like that. And then I'm gonna come up through the topmost hole and pull that through, and then down through that second hole again and then we will skip over the center hole and go to the second from the bottom. And we're gonna come up from the back side here. And then I will go down through the bottom hole. Pull that nice and tight. And you can see how this is coming together. We'll come back up through that second from the bottom. Trying to find, trying to find those holes in that pattern paper can be a little difficult. Pull that through, and then we'll go back down through the centermost uh, hole there, and then it's just a matter of finishing it off. So I'm going to flip this over, and I like to have one end of each tail or one tail end on either side of the thread that's running down the length of the book and tie it around that way just to make sure it's super secure. You could use a wax coated. Um, floss or thread for this if you wanted you know to make sure it was nice and held together but I haven't had any problem with just regular embroidery thread holding these together so I'm gonna go ahead and double knot that 
This is definitely the most time consuming way to bind it, but you probably have a lot of these products already in your stash and so you don't need to buy a sewing machine, you don't need to buy a stapler, you're good to go. It's all nice and secure and if you're using, this is a good method if you're having like really thick traveler's notebook inserts, then this is probably one of the best methods for that. And once again, I'll go ahead and just trim off the excess. You could go in and use the We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper to round your corners if you wanted to. I like to keep mine square. It's just easier for me. One less step, but you could finish those off. And that is it for those three. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box to links to everything that I used today. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.